Billions of years ago, in the early days of our solar system, two rocky planets, not far from each other, began their journey. One became Earth, lush with oceans, clouds, and eventually life. The other, smaller and more distant from the Sun, was Mars. And despite how we see it now, scientists believe it once had conditions surprisingly similar to our own world. But it wasn't just the water. Some Martian rocks analyzed by rovers like Curiosity and Perseverance contain minerals that form only in the presence of both water and oxygen. One of the most striking finds is manganese oxide, a mineral that usually requires high levels of atmospheric oxygen, a condition once thought to be exclusive to Earth. This discovery has led many researchers to wonder whether early Mars may have had a far more dynamic and life-friendly environment than previously believed. Beneath its red dust, Mars shares more similarities with Earth than most people realize. Both planets have a core, mantle, and crust. They both experience seasons, have polar ice caps, and show signs of tectonic activity in the distant past. These shared traits fuel the growing theory that Mars was once not just Earth-like, but Earth's sibling, born from the same cosmic conditions and shaped by similar processes. Yet something changed. While Earth thrived, Mars stalled, its magnetic field disappeared, its atmosphere thinned, its surface water vanished, and the planet that may have once looked like Earth slowly transformed into the barren world we see today. Next, we'll explore what went wrong. What could strip a planet of its atmosphere, dry up its oceans, and turn potential habitability into eternal silence? The answers lie not just in Martian soil, but in the forces that shaped every world in our solar system. For a planet to support life, it's not just water that matters, it's the invisible shield that wraps around it. Earth has one, a powerful magnetic field generated by the motion of molten iron in its core. This field deflects harmful solar radiation and holds the atmosphere close, but Mars, Mars lost that shield. Roughly four billion years ago, something changed deep inside Mars. Its internal dynamo, the engine that powered its magnetic field, simply shut down. Without that protection, solar winds from the young, volatile sun began tearing away at Mars's atmosphere. Bit by bit, molecule by molecule, the sky above Mars thinned, the pressure dropped, and the surface grew colder. What was once a planet rich in rivers, lakes, and maybe even oceans began to dry up, slowly but relentlessly. Evidence of this atmospheric loss isn't just theoretical. NASA's MAVEN orbiter, designed to study Mars's upper atmosphere, has measured this escape in real time. It shows how ions, oxygen and hydrogen are still being stripped away into space. It's a slow death, but a consistent one. And it tells the story of how a planet that may have once cradled life became uninhabitable, not because of a single cataclysm, but through a long, silent erosion. And yet, the surface of Mars still whispers of its past. In places like Gale Crater and Jezero Crater, where the Curiosity and Perseverance rovers now roam, scientists have found clay minerals that only form in standing water. The soil chemistry tells of ancient streams and lake beds. Layered sediments hint at seasonal changes. It's a frozen memory of a lost world. But perhaps the most haunting reminder of Mars's lost potential is its silence. A planet that might have once buzzed with microbial life, warmed by a protective atmosphere and fed by flowing water, now lies quiet. No birds, no wind through trees, just red dust, rocks, and the mechanical whir of a lonely rover. So what does this mean for us? Mars is a warning. It's a real-world experiment in planetary evolution. It shows us what happens when a world loses its ability to protect itself and how fragile the conditions for life truly are.
Mars today is a world of silence, a cold desert where winds sweep across dry riverbeds and ancient lake beds lie frozen in time. But there's a question that refuses to be buried beneath the dust. Was Mars ever alive? Scientists believe the answer might be yes, not with lush forests or intelligent beings, but perhaps once upon a time with microscopic life quietly thriving in the warmth of underground aquifers or clinging to the mineral-rich banks of Martian lakes. Early Mars had all the ingredients, a thick atmosphere, stable surface, protective magnetic field and most crucially, liquid water. And wherever we find water on Earth, we almost always find life. It's not just speculation. NASA's rovers, Curiosity and Perseverance have been exploring areas that were once likely habitable. Jezero Crater, for instance, shows strong evidence of being an ancient river delta, the kind of environment that preserves biosignatures, chemical or physical signs that life was once present. Scientists are carefully cataloguing rock samples from the site hoping to return them to Earth in the coming decades through an ambitious sample return mission. Only then will we be able to examine them with the full arsenal of Earth-based labs and confirm whether life ever left its trace in Martian stone. But even beyond the rocks, Mars keeps whispering secrets. Orbiting satellites have picked up seasonal bursts of methane in the atmosphere, a gas that, on Earth, is mostly released by living organisms. The source of this Martian methane is unknown. It could be geological or it could be biological. If it is biological, then life may still exist on Mars, hidden deep beneath the surface where radiation can't reach, in small pockets of liquid water that might still remain. And here's where the story of Mars takes an even more provocative turn. What if life didn't just start on Mars, but actually originated there and later seeded Earth? This theory, called panspermia, suggests that microbial life could have hitched a ride on a meteorite ejected from Mars during an ancient asteroid impact. Earth and Mars have traded rocks before. It's a scientific fact. Some Martian meteorites have even been found in Antarctica, if even one of them carried a tiny microbial hitchhiker, protected during its journey through space. Then the story of life on Earth may have Martian origins. As technology progresses, some scientists and engineers are looking ahead. Could we terraform Mars? bring it back to a more habitable state. Ideas range from releasing greenhouse gases to artificially warming the planet to using mirrors or even microbial colonies that could slowly rebuild an atmosphere. While that future is distant and uncertain, the mere fact that it's being explored speaks volumes about how much Mars still captures our imagination. Because ultimately, studying Mars isn't just about understanding a distant world. It's about understanding ourselves. It's about answering the question, are we alone? And even more haunting, were we ever alone to begin with? The silence of Mars may one day give way to answers. Until then, we keep listening, we keep digging, and we keep wondering.